Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the fourth module of CN which is related to transport layer. So there are four main topics here. First we will discuss what is the transport layer and its services and after which we will be having a discussion to the main topic of this module which is the transport layer protocols. There are five protocols. We will have to discuss the diagrams in it and the flow state uh, uh, transition diagrams and the different uh, kinds of activities happening there and uh, when we will be using these protocols. So those are very important questions from exam point of view. After which we will be discussing what is UDP and TCP and some of its uh, important concepts. Okay, so uh, before starting, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. It helps me make more videos like this. And if you watch this video till the end, easily you can score more than 80% marks. So stay tuned and watch this video till the end. Without wasting any more time, let's get started. The first one is introduction to transport layer. Okay, so let's have a look at what is the transport layer first of all. Transport layer comes below the application layer and above the network layer okay so we had discussed the uh, network layer and the layers below it in the previous module so in this uh, top in this module we will be discussing the transport layer which comes above the uh, network layer okay and it comes below the application layer so application layer is the top layer this is the second top layer okay so uh, transport layer has some services okay the first one is process to process communication what do you mean by a process it is a running program that uses transport layer services okay it is just a program which utilizes the services provided by the transport layer and transport layer provides communication service between processes so this is a process p1 this is a process p2 so transport layer what it does it will provide a link for the communication between the different process okay so that is what is called the process to process communication the first service provided by the transport layer second is transport layer provides uh, the port numbers that is used for addressing okay transport layer provides port numbers as addresses for sending and receiving data if i want to send our data i want to know where i have to send right so that uh, thing is determined by the port number so uh, the t uh, the transport layer provides the different port numbers and these port numbers are categorized into three different ranges uh, categorized by ICANN, which is international corporation for assigned names and numbers so there are three ranges of port numbers assigned by the ICANN, well known registered and private okay so what is the well known it ranges from 0 to 1023 it is a well known one and it is controlled by ICANN. register one is not controlled by ICANN but it is available for the use whenever uh, someone wants to use they can register with ICANN and they can use it the last one is private it is neither assigned nor controlled by ICANN this is utilized whenever uh, a private connection needs to be made for more uh, transfer of the secure information okay so these are the different uh, ranges of the port number next service is provided by the uh, provided by transport layer is encapsulation and decapsulation what is encapsulation i have a data upon that i put some other data like the information regarding the headers and the different uh, protocols used and what is the uh, metadata all those things which i added or uh, that is called as the encapsulation if i remove those data for getting my main data that is called as decapsulation okay multiplexing and demultiplexing multiplexing means from many sources i am uh, sending data to one source and demultiplexing is from one source to many sources that is called as uh, the multiplexing and demultiplexing and this service is provided by the transport layer next is flow control what do you mean by flow control if uh, the sender is sending a lot of messages and receiver is not able to receive that many messages there will be a mismatch and some other uh, messages will get discarded right so to control that we use buffers okay and we use a sliding window which we will be discussing in go back end protocol the third protocol under the transport layer protocol okay we will be discussing this in depth so buffer is nothing but a place where the uh, extra messages will be kept and utilized when the uh, receiver is free Error control, uh, for error control we will use sequence numbers so that the order is not mismatched and duplicate entries are not taken into consideration and acknowledgement number is also taken uh, here for sending uh, the sequence in which the uh, data is received. Congestion control happens when uh, it's needed when the a lot of messages sent into the network and network is not able to handle the messages flow control happens when receiver is not able to handle the messages congestion happens when network is not able to handle the uh, messages so to control this there are some mechanism which we will be discussing in the later topics so these are the eight services provided by the transport layer okay next coming to connectionless and connection oriented protocol what do you mean by connectionless the main difference between connectionless and connection oriented protocol is independency of packets means in connection uh, connectionless protocol all packets will be sent in random order and received also in random order okay so uh, we will be uh, not able to get an order in which the message should be 
uh, de uh, means uh, decrypted. Okay. So what happens? Wrong data can be decrypted because if the order is not there, the data's meaning can change. So that is what is happening in the connectionless protocol. In connection-oriented protocol, we'll be having some steps. We'll be establishing a connection and we'll be using some numbers to uh, ensure that the order of the packets is are uh, kept okay so uh, let's understand that using an example see if there is a connectionless protocol this is a client and this is a server client sends the messages server will receive the message in the client we are sending the message message one message to message three and the server is receiving those messages so what happens sometimes some message is big some message is small if the message is big it will take a uh, more time to send uh, to the server Meanwhile, instead of waiting what the uh, for increasing the efficiency, message three will get sent in between, right? Instead of waiting for the message to get uh, two to get sent, in the meantime, message three can get sent, so it gets sent. Okay, what happens? Message one, then three, then two gets received. So it sends the missing and incorrect data. Sometimes what happens if this is one chunk, it will just uh, capture one and three and send. That is not having two in between. This is a missing data. Also, the data is incorrect, which is one after three. That is incorrect data. So in connection list, these problems happen. So we use connection oriented where when the uh, message uh, comes uh, before the uh, previous message, like suppose message three has come before message two, it will hold because of sequence number. It knows message three has to come later. Message two has to come first. So it will hold. And whenever message two comes, it will first send message two and then it will send message three. This is the connection oriented protocol. Okay. So two types are there. And uh, to denote the whole process, whatever is happening, like sending the message, receiving the message, sending sequence numbers and receiving sequence numbers, timeout happened or not, what is to be done next, all those things can be represent, represented visually using FSM, which is finite state machine. So let's understand this using an example. So this is a connection oriented uh, protocol. Here what happens? First connection open request is sent. Okay, first initially everything will be closed, and once a connection open request is sent, it will open. Okay, and it will wait. This is wait one. First type of wait. What is first type of wait? First type of wait is when acknowledgement is received or not. We have sent a request, and is the request accepted or not? That acknowledgement we are getting, that is acknowledgement received, and we have to do nothing here. Okay, and open wait two. It is open, acknowledgement is received, and we are waiting for the packet. So that is called as acknowledgement wait to, uh, I mean, open wait to. First, we will wait for acknowledgement. Next, we will wait for the packet. Once packet is received, we will send back an acknowledgement that the packet is received. And this is how the data is gets transferred whenever the connection is established. After the data is over, we have to close the connection. So close connection request is sent, and the wait for the acknowledgement is there. And once that is also done, acknowledgement is also received, then the close request is received. Then we have to send to the uh, send back the acknowledgement that the uh, connection is closed. So that sender will send no more data. Okay. So this is how the uh, FSM uh, rep is represented as. This is for uh, connection oriented protocol. Okay. So this was about the first topic introduction to transport layer. Moving on, we have the transport layer protocol, the most important concept and the topic from exam point of view. Okay. So see here. Five protocols are there. We will discuss each one by one. The first one is the easiest one, and we'll keep on moving uh, as the, it gets more and more complicated. Okay. So first is a simple protocol. It does not have flow or error control. There will be no flow control. There will be no error control. The messages can get uh, corrupted in between. It can get lost in between. It uh, does not have the uh, feature to control that. And it can handle any packet it receives. Okay, we are assuming that the receiver can handle how many ever packets it will be getting. It can never be overwhelmed with the incoming packets. Okay, so it has infinite space here in which all the packets can be sent together. Okay, like that we are assuming it's not real. That cannot happen. Uh, we are just assuming such a uh, thing exists. Okay, the, uh, for that we will be using simple protocol. It is faster and cheaper, but here we will not get the error control. Okay, and the uh, packets can be missed in between. All those things exist. Okay. Let's discuss the FSM for the simple protocol. So uh, we have two states. First is the sender state, and second is the receiver state. Okay. So in sender state, we have a ready state from where we will be starting. Okay. And request came from an application, make a packet and send it. From the application layer, it there comes a request for making a packet and sending it to the network layer. Okay, so he will, uh, the sender will send it and again become in the ready state. 
and in receiver the packet arrives it delivers it to process okay so it uh, uh, receives the uh, packet and delivers it to the application layer in the receiver side okay so again it goes into the ready state this uh, fsm for simple protocol is very uh, straightforward there is nothing uh, complicated here one state is the ready state and uh, the request comes send the packet delivers uh, packet receives and it del uh, gets delivered to the application layer okay Moving on to the second protocol, which is stop and wait protocol. Okay, so let's understand one by one what are its features. The first one, it it uses both flow and error control. Okay, it has both flow <laughs> and error control. Sender sends one packet at a time and waits for acknowledgement. Okay, one packet is sent at a time, and until acknowledgement comes, another packet is not sent. To detect corrupt packets, checksum is added. So checksum is added to ensure that the packet is correct. We have discussed checksum in the previous module, right? Timer is added to recent packet if acknowledgement is not received. So there is a timer which waits for some amount of time to check if the acknowledgement has come or not. If it does not come, it uh, might mean that acknowledgement is lost or it might mean that packet was not delivered. So in both cases, packet is recent. Okay. And sequence numbers are also added to keep the duplicates out. Okay. So let's understand the FSM for uh, sim uh, stop and wait protocol. So here we have two states, ready and blocking state. Okay, and uh, receiver always has only one state, which is ready state. Okay, so uh, the sender state, ready, send the packet S and start the timer. So packet is sent and the timer is started and it's in the blocking state. Once a packet is sent, it is in the blocking state. So in blocking state, uh, some uh, things can happen, which is timeout can happen, right? The packet is sent and timeout happens before receiving the acknowledgement. Resend the packet and restart the timer. If the timeout happens, resend the packet and restart the timer. If the corrupted acknowledgement is uh, there, then discard it. Okay, if the corrupted acknowledgement is there, discard it. And if the uh, correct acknowledgement is there, then send the correct acknowledgement, uh, get the correct acknowledgement from the receiver. If it gets the correct acknowledgement from the receiver, stop the timer and uh, go to the ready state for sending the next packet. Okay, three things. If the timeout happens, resend the packet, restart the timer. If there are corrupted uh, acknowledgement comes from the receiver, discard it. And uh, if the correct acknowledgement comes from the receiver, go to the ready state and send the next packet. Okay. In receiver state, corrupt packet, if it is there, discard it. If correct packet, uh, corrupt packet, it is there, discard it. If it is a correct packet, then send the acknowledgement. If it is an old packet, means the old packet all, uh, got recent here, which is already there, discard and send the old acknowledgement. Okay. So three things here also. If it is corrupted, discard it. If it is a correct one, then uh, send the acknowledgement to the uh, sender that the uh, uh, packet is received. And if it is an old packet sent by the uh, receiver, discard it and send old acknowledgement to uh, let the sender know that it was an old packet. Okay. So the different scenarios can be understood using a flow diagram. This is called as flow diagram. Okay. This is called as flow diagram. So sender is there, receiver is here. Okay. Packet zero is sent. Receiver has received it. So it sends an acknowledgement one. Always n plus one is there. The acknowledgement will be n plus one. Okay. Acknowledgement is received here. Then second packet will be sent P1. But P1 was not received here. Okay. And timer was out. No acknowledgement was also received. So timer is uh, again restarted. P1 is again sent. The same P1 is again sent here. It is received here. The acknowledgement will be sent. Acknowledgement is received here. Packet two will be sent. Acknowledgement is received here. But acknowledgement is not sent back to the sender so what happens p2 will again be sent here okay and uh, p2 since it's already received here the duplicate will be discarded and acknowledgement 3 will be sent to the sender okay this is the stop and wait protocol let's understand the third one which is go back and protocol okay using an example we'll directly understand so suppose the following data is to be sent sliding window size is 8 okay so this is the whole data 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 0 1 2 okay so this is the whole data to be sent and sliding window size is 8 means at a time maximum 8 uh, packets can be sent okay so we'll send it one by one this is the sender side this is the receiver side pay attention here this is the sender side 8 packets are there and one by one we'll be sending so packet 0 is sent uh, to the receiver and in acknowledgement the packet zero is received so acknowledgement one will be sent here means i need i need the next packet which is one packet that is what acknowledgement one denotes so the sliding window see as you can observe the sliding window has slided and removed zero from it and included the next one which is seven in it okay so like that whenever we received an acknowledgement uh, after sending a packet that means we are not concerned about it we will move the sliding window one step next okay so now one is to be sent one has sent here one is received here but acknowledgement is lost here. 
one is received but acknowledgement is lost here it sent the acknowledgement but it is lost here so this doesn't know that uh, one is received or not right the sender doesn't know one is received it could have happened that packet was also lost or acknowledgement has lost both the cases look same to the sender so what is to be done it will not do anything it will send two okay it will send all the packets until the end okay it will not wait for the acknowledgement uh, 2 to come here so it will send packet 2 here when packet 2 is sent uh, it will send the acknowledgement 3 okay acknowledgement 3 is sent from the uh, receiver side so when they uh, when the sender gets acknowledgement 3 here it understands that i did not in, uh, get the acknowledgement 2 but i got acknowledgement 3 that means packet 2 was received packet 1 was also received but acknowledgement 2 was lost okay that is the scenario if acknowledgement 3 is sent by the uh, receiver it is assumed that packet 2 and packet 1 the previous packets were received otherwise it will not send acknowledgement 3 it will again send acknowledgement 2 in case packet 1 was not sent <coughs> okay and when packet 2 will be sent packet 2 will be discarded because first it needs packet 1 so whichever is the latest acknowledgement present that will be sent to the uh, sender side so it will get to know that the previous packets were successfully received so in the same way 4 5 6 7 8 9 uh, 7 0 and 1 is sent but what happens all the acknowledgements were lost okay now what happened all the acknowledgements were lost but all the packets were received here acknowledgement was sent but acknowledgement was lost in between so the receiver side have received all only two is remaining the last one two is remaining okay but the sender doesn't know sender uh, for sender no acknowledgement has been received so sender will assume that all these packets are uh, not received by the uh, receiver and they have to be resent so that's what will happen timer out will happen it will wait for some time and if the all the packets in the sliding window were not received in the acknowledgement none of the acknowledgement come then again it will start from 3 it will send 3 but the receiver will discard 3 why because it already has received it it will discard 3 and it will send the acknowledgement of the one which it needs it will send acknowledgement 2 directly so acknowledgement 2 it sent but that also got lost here so according to the rule sender will after uh, send the packet 4 after packet 3 then packet 5 6 7 again it will send right so packet 3 packet 4 it will send when it sends packet 4 again it will discard discard packet 4 because packet 4 is already received so again it will send the acknowledgement for the 2 i need the 2 like that it will say to the sender i need uh, the second packet and in this case the acknowledgement is finally received here so when it's received the sender will understand that it needs two means all the previous one were successfully um, received by the receiver so it will then send packet two and the acknowledgement will send for the further data and it will continue okay so this is how go back n protocol works go back n means go back n packets if the n packets were not received the acknowledgement for the nth packet if it's not received go back n packets that's the uh, meaning of the name go back n protocol okay let's understand the fsm for go back n protocol sender side ready state and blocking state sender side if it is not received timeout happens resend all the packets if it is a corrupt acknowledgement again discard the corrupt acknowledgement send the packet here and check if the window is full or not i told you there is a window right maximum how many packets it can send if we'll check if the window is full or not if it is not full if it is not full false again send the packet send the packet until the window is full if the window is full go to the blocking state and wait for the acknowledgement if the acknowledgement does not come resend all the packets restart the timer if acknowledgement comes but it is corrupted discard it and stay in the blocking state if correct acknowledgement comes means go back to the ready state and send the next set of packets in the receiver side ready state is there send the acknowledgement if the packet is received here if duplicate packet is received discard it if corrupt packet is received discard it okay very simple here okay the next one is the selective repeat protocol so uh, it is similar to the go back and protocol uh, but it had a limitation uh, which is a lot of same packets had to be recent right in the previous one which you discussed a lot of the same packets were uh, to be recent this is overcome in selective repeat protocol okay so we are not sending again the same packets which are already sent we are avoiding that and sending only those which are required to be recent okay so let's understand how that happens suppose that this is the data we need to transfer 0 to 7 and another 0 here and this is the sender and this is the receiver okay first uh, we send packet 0 and packet 0 is received here arctic mark is present here so acknowledgement 0 is sent back here okay so 0 is discarded from here next one i have to send one we are sending here and one is not uh, received in this end okay so what happens one is lost 
okay so uh, we keep on sending the further ones two we will send acknowledgement of two is received three we will send three is also received four we will send four is also received now what happens after the uh, window size is over or the time is over it will recheck again that all the uh, numbers are sent and the acknowledgement for all the numbers are received or not right so here sf is pointing to the first bit which is not sent right so here uh, the first bit first bit was zero it is sent and received the acknowledgement so we discarded it and made the first bit which is not sent as one here so one is the one which is uh, sent but acknowledgement is not received so we therefore assume that it is not uh, sent to the receiver side so that check will happen and based on that check again one will be sent and we, if we receive the acknowledgement one we will be assuming that the remaining ones are also done because acknowledgement till four we had received only one was not received right so uh, we are not going to send it again and uh, as you can observe here only this one was sent if it was go back in protocol we will go back and all this uh, had to be recent again but here we are keeping track of what acknowledgement we did not receive and selectively sending that only so this is selective repeat uh, protocol okay so this is the fsm same as the previous one we have two states here in the sender and the receiver ready state and blocking state in ready state if the timeout happens resend the uh, uh, packets and if it's a corrupted acknowledgement from the uh, receiver end we should discard it if it is an error free acknowledgement stay in the same state that's uh, fine and if you want to send the packet sending the packet and checking if the window is full or not if the window is not full send another packet until the window becomes full if it is uh, full the window is full go to the blocking state in the blocking state if timeout happens resend all the packets which were not sent if the corrupted acknowledgement is arrived discard it and stay in the blocking state only and stay in this state until the window slide uh, becomes false window slide uh, does not happen until that stay in the blocking state when will window slide happen when we receive our true acknowledgement right so when we receive a true acknowledgement we will come back to the ready state in receiver end we are in the ready state if it is a correct packet send acknowledgement if it is a duplicate packet discard if it is a cor corrupt packet also discard okay this was about selectively repeat protocol next is bidirectional protocol this is a small topic uh, also known as piggy banking so the protocols till now which we discussed are unidirectional only we are sending and receiving acknowledgement from here packets are sent from here acknowledgement is received from here but in bidirectional packet and acknowledgement both are sent and received okay from both the sides packet as well as acknowledgement is sent and received so that is the uh, piggy banking we will be using here so piggy banking which can carry both ac and packet data together Okay, that's all. Now it's not a big topic, not uh, important from the exam point of view. The important ones are the ones which I discussed in the top. Okay. Moving on to the third topic of the module, which is user datagram protocol, also known as UDP. So, user datagram protocol is a packet of fixed length. Eight bytes will be there. How many bytes will be there? Eight bytes for header will be there, and followed by eight to sixty-five thousand bytes for data. Okay, so eight bytes will be for the header, and rest of the bytes will be for the data. Okay. Now. UDP is unreliable protocol with no flow or error control. Okay, some services provided by the uh, UDP are process-to-process -process communication is provided by using the user sockets. It's a connectionless service. There is no specific connection present, so data can be lost in between. There is no flow or error control. Optional checksum is there to make it a bit more secure. No congestion control. Encapsulation and decapsulation is present. Queuing is uh, present here and multiplexing and deep multiplexing at uh, sender and receiver side happens. So these are the eight services of UDP. Where is UDP used? See, you might imagine that it's a very useless protocol. It does not have any error or flow control. Why will anyone use it? So there are some reasons why we will use it. Connectionless service means if you, if you just want to send a short message between a sender and a receiver, you can use UDP because it is uh, not uh, a big deal to send it again if it is not received right two to the two to three times it can be sent and the receiver will most probably receive it instead of uh, making a separate connection it will cause a lot of delay right so in that case go with the connectionless service for the udp lack of error control ensures that no need to keep track and resend the data lack of congestion control sometimes congestion control methods can worsen the situation so here in udp congestion control is not there so congestion chances are also lesser used for multicasting if you want to send from one to many it is used for multicasting and for management process also udp is used going on to the last topic which is tcp here we will go in a bit depth because the important questions and concepts come from more from this topic okay so tcp is a connection oriented and reliable protocol okay what are the services provided process to process communication stream delivery service the byte streams are there in which the data gets transferred full duplex mode means 
from both the side the sending and receiving happens simultaneously multiplexing and demultiplexing is present it's a connection oriented service a connection will be established first then the data will be sent connection and then the connection will be broken down it's a reliable service there is more guarantee and more secure security of the data being transferred okay what are the features of tcp it provides two numbering systems here one for the sequence number and one for the acknowledgement number what is the sequence number sequence number is used to keep track of data packets order which order it is sent acknowledgement number is used to keep track of packets received how many packets are received the, so tcp uh, gives us the uh, features of two numbering systems one for the sequence number and one for the acknowledgement number this is not present in udp okay what is a segment a packet in a tcp is called a segment okay what is a segment a packet in a tcp the packet in which we have the data and the header that is called a segment so header consists of 2 to 60 bytes and the rest will be consisting of data now header consists of few uh, data the data present here it consists of source and destination address what is the sequence number acknowledgement number and the header's length what is the length of the header and we have six reserved bytes which we'll be discussing in the next topic window size what is the window size how many uh, bytes can be sent together that is the window size checksum is present here and urgent pointer to send some urgent data and optional padding is also present here this is the uh, diagram which you need to make in the exam for the header okay header and its uh, data types present next we have the uh, we'll discuss these things okay what are these things this is things called the control field so in control field we have six uh, categories URG is the urgent pointer is valid. So if URG is true, it means that urgent pointer is valid. There is some urgent data to be sent. ACK acknowledgement is valid. PSH means request for pushing the data. And RST means reset the connection. SYN means synchronize sequence numbers. We'll use SYN when establishing a connection. And FIN means finish the connection or terminate the connection. This will be used when we tear down the connection. Okay, we'll see this in detail in the upcoming topic, TCP connection. So TCP connection is established using three-way handshake protocol. Okay, so we have three-way handshake protocol. What is the three-way handshake protocol? First step is to establish the connection. So in establishing connection, we use three-way handshake protocol. Client sends a SYN flag, which is a synchronized sequence number. One sequence number will be sent as a request to the server so, uh, so that server can establish a connection. This request is sent by the client. Then server takes the request and sends back sync plus acknowledgement as a note of accepting the connection request if it does not accept it will send nsek which is negative acknowledgement okay so after this is received by the client client sends an acknowledgement telling to the uh, server that i am going to start the transfer of the data okay next data transfer happens after the connection is established it works in full duplex mode where the data is sent and received at the same time both data and acknowledgement are transferred from both the sides after the data transfer is over client sends a fin request fin means finish the uh, connection request to the server server responds it by fn fin plus ack acknowledging that it is ready to finish the connection and then client sends ack to notify to the uh, server that the connection has been ended okay so this is the three-way handshake protocol both used in both connection ending and uh, in connection establishment okay <clears throat> sometimes malicious users send a lot of requests to the servers to block other users from getting access to the server see what happens when a request is sent uh, some resources are allocated to the request made right so like that if many requests come many resources will be allocated to many uh, users but all those users if it is a single user it will be allocated to one single user and other users when we, they try to access the server it will not be available that is called as dos which is denial of service attack okay what is window size it is the maximum number of packets that can be sent or received at an instance it defines the limit how many packets can be sent at one instance flow control to uh, ensure that the, there is a sync between the packet sent and received we use flow control so how is flow control uh, taken into consideration in TCP? Flow control in TCP is achieved by shrinking and expanding window to how much size it is required. Okay, when more data is coming, shrink the window so that more data can cannot come. If it is less data which is coming, it will expand the data. It will expand the window so that more data can be accommodated. Accommodated. Okay. So here is an example. Client is here and server is here. The size is 800 here. How much data can be sent at one instance? 800 is the size. So one data is sent here, 101 is sent and it is received. So once 101 is received, the size will decrease here. And this same size will be sent back here so that in the sender side also it will be decreased. 600 is the size. Then 300 will be sent, it will decrease to 400. Then uh, next data will be sent. And uh, after two or three times it is sent, if it is decreased too much, it will uh, expand the data. Okay, likewise it will go in a cycle. 
expand then decrease expand then decrease so that the condition will be uh, i mean the flow control will be there okay, okay. so uh, next we have the silly window silly window syndrome here also uh, one uh, kind of um, attack happens which is uh, called as silly window syndrome not actually the attack but what happens here is that uh, when a large packet is there a large amount of data can be present there but a small data is present and the whole packet's data is wasted see this is the packet and this is only the data and this whole packet is getting transferred so that is inefficient right so to solve it we use the nagel's algorithm where the segment waits until the data is filled in the packet then only it is sent okay so the, uh, this is the way we use uh, uh, this is the algorithm we use to solve the silly window uh, syndrome okay so this is about the flow control moving on we have the error control Control. there are few methods by the tcp for error control error control means if the data uh, which is received is not actually the data which we sent that is called as error control we can use checksum acknowledgement numbers are used retransmission happens if the data is uh, to be again uh, transmitted okay so if the data is not received it will retransmit the data and out of order segments it uh, temporarily stores but never uh, delivered oh, yeah. so out of order segment mean that once the uh, data is uh, present in a particular sequence uh, that order is not uh, the order is not right okay so uh, the data is received uh, in different packets but the order is not right so this data will be temporarily stored by the uh, tcp for verification if the data is correct or not and once the correct data is coming then only it will be transferring the data so it ensures that the uh, data is transferred in the correct order so that is also one uh, way of error control fast retransmission once the data is uh, lost in between so it has to be retransmitted it is same as uh, retransmission but the algorithm uh, differs uh, slightly we are not discussing what is uh, uh, the algorithm actual algorithm which is there which is in the fast retransmission it is out of the uh, scope of the syllabus so here only the thing is that retransmission and fast retransmission the method used is different and here it uh, does the same task more fastly okay Moving on to the last topic in the TCP, which is the con uh, congestion control. Okay, what well, what is congestion? Congestion happens when the network gets overloaded. Okay, if there is a network, if there is uh, if the network is present and a lot of data is sent simultaneously, at that time it gets loaded. Okay, overloaded. Okay, how does it handle the um, congestion? Congestion window handles the first layer of congestion. Okay. What is a congestion window? Congestion window means the maximum amount of data which can be sent into the network that is defined by a window that is called as congestion window. So two events point out the congestion. So how will we know that the, know that the congestion has happened? First is timeout. If the sender has sent some data and has not received an acknowledgement, that is the timeout. It will assume that the data has not been reached the uh, server. And why it has not reached server? Because there is congestion. Okay, like that it will assume and uh, get to know that the timeout uh, means the congestion has happened because of timeout. Second is receiving three duplicate acknowledgements. If it receives three duplicate acknowledgements for the same uh, data, that means that uh, there is congestion. It is not receiving any more new data. All the new data which is being sent is lost and the same acknowledgement is uh, being sent back again. That will denote that there is a congestion. Okay, there are three methods to solve the congestion. First is slow start. Slow start means it will start one, then it will become two, then it will become four, uh, then it will become eight. What will become one, two, four, eight? The uh, how much data can be transferred at one point of time that is exponentially increasing. It will not be like 100 data can be transferred at a time, then it will be uh, th uh, 500, then it will be 1000, like, not like that. Okay, it will st start slowly one, two, four, like that, and it will uh, stop at a point where the data is going to be congested. Okay, so that will uh, ensure that congestion can be solved here and congestion avoidance is also used this is additive uh, increase this is exponential one two four double double it's happening additive means one then two then three then four then five so this is congestion avoidance and fast recovery uses fractional additive means one then 1.5 then two then 2.25 then 2.75 like that it is using fractions of data okay so it will be actually one plus one by cwd okay cwd is the congestion window congestion window is equal to one plus one by condition window okay so these three methods are used and the question remains when will tcp use which algorithm which algorithm the tcp will use which time so tcp there are three types and based on the type the algorithm is chosen first one is uh Tahoe tcp okay so it is an early tcp it uses slow start and congestion avoidance algorithm okay so see two uh, events are there which denotes that uh, the condition has happened timeout and duplicate edge case so whenever timeout happens again the uh, condition window size will become zero so that 
uh, it will again start from the beginning. This is called a slow start. Okay. And whenever uh, any uh, duplicate uh, acknowledgement or timeout happens, again it will come to zero. So that the limit of sending the data is reduced and slowly it is increasing. Okay. So that uh, until it increases, the congestion is resolved. Next one is Reno TCP. It is a newer version of TCP. It introduced a new state to the congestion control called fast recovery. So if timeout happens, it will go to the slow start state. If three duplicate acknowledgement happen, it will go to the fast recovery state. So the difference you can see here. If timeout happens, it will uh, start from the beginning here. If three duplicate acknowledgement happens, it will not go to the beginning, but it will go a little bit down. That is called as fast recovery. Fast recovery means little bit down. Okay. And next one is Reno TCP. Reno TCP extra optimized uh, new Reno TCP. Okay, so this is extra optimized Reno TCP. Here, the uh, duplicate acknowledgements uh, in the previous one were more. Okay, the three duplicate acknowledgement happened, and from here again, if it is happening, there is a more chance of uh, happening uh, duplicate TCP or duplicate acknowledgement. So in that case, we utilize a technique in this case called as additive increase and multiplicative decrease. Additive increase means it will be increase one, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, like that, but it will decrease from 8 to 4. It will divide by 2, 4 to 2, 2 to 1, like that. It will decrease, okay? It will decrease more but increase slowly. In this case, it is observed that the um, acknowledgements and the duplicate acknowledgements are reduced, okay? So that's all uh, for this module. And if you found this video helpful, please do like and subscribe. That helps me make more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.